These are the best export settings for YouTube in DaVinci Resolve. They always give me the highest quality possible and look identical on any device. I will also break down why I use each setting, so you actually understand what's happening in the deliver page. If you are only here for the settings, there's a list at the end. But trust me, spend the 6 minutes now and you will never export blindly again. With that said, choose the custom export option. First we dial in all the settings and then we save them as a preset for one-click exports in the future. The format is MP4 and for the codec we choose H.264. This offers the best balance of quality, speed and compatibility. Alternatively, you can choose H.265. These are smaller files, slightly better compression, but slower to render and heavier on your system. Great for YouTube if your system can handle it, but H.265 is less reliable on platforms like Instagram. So the safe choice here is H.264. Use hardware acceleration if available is turned on. This ensures faster rendering via your GPU. The network optimization is made for real-time streaming, but it lowers compression efficiency. And since YouTube recompresses your video anyway, we keep it off. The resolution should always match your project, which is usually 4K for YouTube. And the frame rate again should match your source footage. Typically, that's 23.976 FPS for a cinematic look. For the quality, we don't choose automatic. YouTube recommends at least 35,000, but we set our bitrate something between 60 to 80,000, since higher rates survives compression better. For all my YouTube videos, I always chose 80,000, and I never had quality issues. The encoding profile is set to high, and the entropy mode is set to KBAG. KBAG offers smaller file sizes and better compression efficiency. The only downside is a longer export and a harder time for the CPU. But of course, we accept that. The multipass encode is always turned on. This one improves quality in high motion or complex scenes like crashing waves or moving trees. Now we move to the advanced settings. The pixel aspect ratio is set to square since it's the standard for 4K footage. Data levels are set to video because this ensures proper contrast and brightness for YouTube. The color space tag is set to Rec 709 and the gamma tag is gamma 2.2. For social media exports you should always work with gamma 2.2. Gamma 2.4 would only be relevant if you are targeting TV or larger screens. So as a rule of thumb, if you export for any phone, laptop or tablet, always choose Gamma 2.2. The data burn-in is set to none, since this option overlays metadata like timecode on your video. Unless that's intentional, you don't want this on your final YouTube export. All the following options are all unchecked, except this one, for sizing to highest quality. The first one, bypass re-encode when possible, only skips rendering if a clip already matches the export settings with no edits applied. And since almost all YouTube videos have grading or effects, it won't help here, so we leave it off. The next three options lead to lower quality working files. We want to keep it off since we want to export original full quality footage. The far sizing to highest quality makes sure that scaling and resizes use the best algorithms. The next one is only needed for raw footage. For regular 4K H.264 footage it has no effect. The last one is only needed for very old devices. Don't check this box since it lowers efficiency and quality. The enable flat pass option is always off. Turning it on skips all your color grades, all your LUTs and all your fusion effects. Which basically means you're exporting only the original ungraded image. Only use the flat pass option if someone else will handle the work or grading for you. The Vision OS bypass is not relevant for YouTube exports, we keep it off. Now we move to the audio tab because if you're using any kind of audio like music or voiceover etc. These are the settings you should choose. For the codec AAC, since this is the standard for YouTube, you want to have a constant bitrate and the track data rate of 320 kilobytes per second. 
This ensures high quality stereo audio. The sample rate should always be at 48,000 Hz because that's again the YouTube and broadcast standard. Okay, that's it. Now click the three dots at the top, save it as a preset and the next time you export a video, just select it on the upper left, add it to the render queue and render your video in the highest quality possible. Thanks for watching.